Change the colour of this explosion a little bit. I want it to be a bit greener. Um, just to help it stand out a little bit. Okay, so here's my green explosion. I'm going to grab this and we're going to talk about exporting a little bit into different project formats. Again, I'm going to stick with 28 frames. Um, it only captured 28 frames, for example. Um, some people have asked that they want a lot more frames for their animations. Now, in version 3, even though this only captured 28, what you can actually do is go back to the explosion and slow the explosion down. So let's slow it down a little bit and grab now. It's now going to grab a lot more frames. Again, if you want even more frames, slow it down more. It'll grab more frames. Obviously, in your game, you can play it back quicker, and that's no, not a problem at all. Um, so it's, it's up to yourselves how you actually want to, how many frames you want to grab, and the tool will work with you grabbing them. So, okay, we're going to work with these 27 frames now. Let's export this out. Okay, we talked a little bit about the um, size and scales that you can actually do to help maintain memory, but I'm actually going to go through the different export options. What we have here, the first one is the PNG files. Now this is separate PNG files for each one. And you can actually ask the, the tool to generate the file mask, a separate mask, and the image without any mask. So for my example, I'm going to do all three, and I'm going to export it out into our folder. So pick our folder, and let's export it out. Okay, so it's each of the frames masked with transparency, and one without transparency. If I have a look inside my folder, I now have the combined PNGs, the masks, and the one with no mask. So here's the ones with no mask, so it's just black background. But this is just the mask, so it's just going to be black and white, and the combined PNG files all put together for us. Okay, So you can open these up and view them in preview. And obviously you can place them in separately now into your project files. What we're going to do now, we're going to have a look at TIFF is very similar, so you can export out the different formats, the different options, but in the TIFF format. And the JPEG, you can actually export out as JPEG files, but obviously JPEG doesn't support transparency, so you can pick a black or white background and the quality. So if I said a black background, bring the quality down, export this out. And let's go to the PNG sprite sheet. This is just going to be a generic sprite sheet based on this size and what background we want. So we could have a white background, a black, or a custom colour if you have a particular tool that masks out a particular colour for sprite sheets. Uh, in my example, I'm going to use transparent. You can actually change the order, the layout of the sprites. This tells us it's going to go um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this order here. Um, but to find the best configuration and best size, just have a quick play around with the X and Y parameters. So I'll export this out just to show you this. This is a PNG sprite sheet. Okay, so here's my sprite sheet, all on its own, been created. Okay, so let's do another format. This time, what we'll actually do, we'll export out to Game Salad, for example. Now, in Game Salad, the project file we create, you, we, we've done some where you can actually create random sizes. So I'll turn this off for this example. And also the explosion is quite large at 400 by 400, so I'm going to reduce this down to say 50, so it's 50%, so it becomes 200 by 200. And I want the frame to run, these 30, uh, these 27 frames to run at around 40 frames a second in the Game Seller project. Okay, so let's export this out straight to Game Seller. So it's going to generate the Game Seller project file with all the animation in place on the desktop. Okay. And here's our game solid project file. So if we open this up in game solid, I'm just double clicking and open it. Here's the scene that's been built for us, all ready to go. The images have been put in for us, and the behaviors and the animation behaviors have all been put in for us, as well as the timers, how many frames, etc., all come from the explosion generator tool. So if I play this project for you, so you can see, it's just an example, but you can just tap the screen and see your explosions play back. So I know it's very basic, but again, it's just to get people going, getting explosions into their project files. No, so let's close this down. And then I know we showed it earlier, but what we can actually do, we can export straight into Corona. Same explosion. I'm going to change the sprite sheet because I know it could be better optimized to this point here. 
Uh, we're going to enlarge it a little bit. And it's going to play over half a second by the looks of it. So let's just export this one out. And again, this is going to create the PNG sprite sheet, all the files that are required to run the Lua files in Corona, and all the resource files that are required to actually run this, as well as the sprite sheet and the sprite sheet data files. So if we open this up now, we can have a look. Okay, so it's this one. And then there's our explosion. And again, it's a bit larger this time because we actually told it to make it a little bit larger, 1.6%. So again, you can have it to 100%. It, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so um, for this animation, though, I think it's happening a little bit too quick and stopping a little bit too short. So for the Corona project, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to say for the Corona project, I want 40 frames. Okay, export the animation. Still into Corona. It's all defaulted, ready for that. I'm going to do it at 75%. Um, I'm going to have the explosion run at 1.2%. Let's have a look at this one. So we've got more frames, larger, so a bigger sprite sheet, more information, more detail. Um, here's our file that's been created straight into Corona. And run the file. And there you go. It's a lot smoother this explosion is. So we can actually add more frames to create the animation, make it smoother, make the explosion more realistic if that's what we wanted to do. Okay. And then the last option there that I think we saw was get rid of this one. Um, is you can actually export the project out straight into um, an Xcode project um, using the CodeCars 2D um, SDK. So export this out. And this will create a complete project file ready for you in Xcode so export it out see what it's created so we've got all the Xcode files all the um, objective C files etc all been created for you along with all the um, plist files that go to how the explosion is built along and obviously the sprite sheet that's going to be used so if I open this up in Xcode now let's open the file so all the actual code has been generated for you put in. All you need to do is actually compile it um, to your simulator or your device if you've got a device connected. Um, just compile and run. So it's just compiling. Okay so once it's compiled and built you can actually open it up. Well it will also actually open up in the simulator where you can test it. Okay so here's the GoCoS project file and there's our explosion all put in together for us and again you just pick apart the Objective-C files that are put in or you just use the PNG resource uh, sprite sheet files using your project files okay so it's a very simple example of creating a CoCoS Xcode project there